Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Locker Room Media. Today, obviously, we're going to be talking about Julio Jones. He said he wanted out. What was that? I think on Shannon Sharp's podcast, he was like, well, I'm yeah, out of <laughs> Or something. I, I don't know. It was it was a weird combo, but he doesn't want to be an Atlanta Falcon anymore. That's all we know. That's all that matters, and that's why this video is coming out to you guys. Um, personally, we think that six teams obviously have a factor in trading for this guy. Obviously, the whole entire league, if they give up enough, they're going to be able to trade for him. But we think this is the six most likely teams that will that he will be going to. Well, actually, five most likely teams in one wish. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not the most likely, but it all any he could get traded back to the he could get traded to the Lions and then back to the Falcons. Not anything can happen in the NFL. So exactly, on any given Sunday and every any given day of the week, anything can happen in the NFL. So, exactly. firstly, we're gonna start off with the New England Patriots. Um, we're kind of gonna I'm gonna kind of run through like the big scheme of things. We have three major points. We're gonna name every single team's wide receiver one through three. Explain our reasons how they would help them and what they would have to give up. So first, we're going to start off with the Patriots, who made a historical comeback in the Super Bowl, the most historical comeback of we've ever seen in a Super Bowl. 28 to three again. Yep. <laughs> Julio Jones and the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, Julio Jones had an insane catch that game. Like the two, uh, the two. Um, two so did snag. Edelman had a catch on somebody's helmet. But, yeah. yeah, that too. Um, first, we'll start off with probably the biggest point out of this. Mac Jones gets a big time target. Second, he gets up in the NFL. He's having a top three target in the league with Julio Jones. And we'll go straight down to the wide receivers. He has Nelson Aguilar as his number one. Now, don't get me wrong. Nelson Aguilar had a great comeback season when he went to the Raiders coming off of horrible years with, with the Eagles. But I think that it was just, it's just the team, man. That it's, it's a dumpster fire over there. I think Nelson Aguilar is a solid number two wide receiver. He's reliable. Wait, when you play, when you take the 2000 Michigan method with uh, Tom Brady and, uh, Chad Henney and uh, Drew Henson, you, that, that's not a very good result for the wide receivers because you're playing with two to three different quarterbacks, and that's just not a good vibe in the locker room. Jalen Hurts, Kurtz, and Wentz, they just didn't connect, obviously, because you can't have two quarterbacks on, in the best position on the team. So it just doesn't make sense. That's why New England's a good fit for them. Especially like the leader leadership factor of that. If, yeah. let's, let's say you have more than two quarterbacks trying to lead your team. Who are people going to look up to, man? Like you, what you're going to look up to the second string quarterback that sometimes gets playing time, but he's a better leader than the number one. Like you got to pick the guy yeah, on those two. Exactly. That's why I think might like I always see the memes of uh, Taysom Hill um, with Jameis Winston with the Saints. You know how it's like, oh, don't let him be the quarterback or whatever the future. That's what I think might happen with Tim. Tim Tebow is going to be like a four string tight end. That's like the best leader of all time or something. I, I feel like that's how it's going to go. But like, obviously you can have leaderships and different types of positions on the team. The quarterback doesn't need to be the best leader of all time. He doesn't need to be the leadership in that, but I'm just talking about in the quarterback aspect. Like I'll take the Denver Broncos, for example. Um, John Elway has stated that he doesn't, he, he doesn't have a number one quarterback yet. He has Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke, which I think is the most stupid plan of all time. Cause both of them are, meh quarterbacks and you're telling me you're gonna Drew play Locke both on the sideline i don't think he takes football seriously no not at all but like you're gonna have two mediocre quarterbacks fight over a number one spot and they're gonna play on every sunday both of them this is not college football guys this ain't high school football this exactly. is the nfl this is the big leagues you got to have a guy like mac jones who's gonna start and he's gonna get a big time target um and then i got the last point for the new england patriots they get julio jones they're winning for the next 10 years. There, there's no doubt in my mind that the, they, they lose one year. They don't make Julio don't, J- like 33, correct? No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying that even with pushing out with Julio Jones, let's say he retires in five years. Okay. You're still going to have an insane amount of star talent around him because then you're going to have Julio Jones as a veteran guy who's going to teach a bunch of youngsters what to do. It, it's going to be a new dynasty. It, it's, and, and especially with Mac Jones learning to throw a ball to a guy like Julio Jones, let's say they get a replacement for him. It's, it's a new dynasty yeah, here in New England. Game over. But my question, what do they give up to get Julio? Is Mac Jones even still a Patriot if they do end up acquiring Julio Jones? Though? I think that- Mac Jones is still a Patriot. The one, the one guy I don't think that will be staying a Patriot is Stefan Gilmore. That that's my take. I think that- it'll be, I think it'll be Gilmore and a fourth round pick will be traded for Julio. What will the rebuilding Falcons want a veteran 
don't get me wrong. He's one of the best, if not the best corner in the NFL. But do they really want a good pull out of that pack there? Um, <laughs> um, no, nah, I just lost my complete train of thought. Stefan Gilmore, veteran. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stefan Gilmore, would they really want him? A older corner. Like, I get it. He's a veteran leader. He can teach all the young guys. Keanu Neal, safety. Falcons, very good player. No, Neal, Neal's gone. I'm pretty sure he he's in the Cowboys. Man, I, I don't I, – I, I'm just going to stop talking and hand the rest of this over to you. <laughs> I, no, I honestly think that Stefan Gilmore in a fourth-round pick will be enough to get Julio. It's the Falcons front office. They haven't been good since the Super Bowl. It Like I was talking to, uh, you know, Mr. Hicks, one of our teachers I was yeah. talking to him the other day. This is like one of the biggest drop-offs we've ever seen, ever. Like, I mean, ever. You go from Super Bowl 28 to three to three years later and you're picking at number four? Come on. You but know? You're at Calvin Johnson, so I mean, it's a win-win. I mean, I mean, yeah, did- they did. They just did just draft Kyle Pitts. They just drafted Kyle Pitts, who will be Julio's replacement. He is the future. Exactly. And we'll be going out of the next team then. We got the San Francisco. Going back to that Julio statement. If he's like, well, I don't need the screen. You can go to the. But um, if you think about it, they they drafted Julio's replacement. You know, when the Detroit Lions trade Darius Slay for a fifth round into the Eagles, who did we draft as our replacement? We drafted a kid named Jeff Okuda. Don't even what? say that he's a bust because he got injured. Okay. And you look at the player. Okuda? Okuda's not a bust. I, I don't a- I don't think you could be classified as a bust until four years after you're in the no, league. no, no, no. He is a failed rookie. Yeah. He can easily progress up the chain, but if he's plagued with injuries his entire career, he will be going down as a bust. I don't care how good you are. If you only play half the games in the season, you are not good. Yeah. Um speaking about injuries. We're going to talk about Jimmy G here. Trey Lance or Jimmy G are going to have another number one target. You look, and and I'll point out another point that I have on the bottom of the screen. Julio Jones and George Kittle on the same team. That's insane. That's that's literally insane. I I don't think a defense can guard him. I, I legitimately don't think a defense will be able to stop this offense. I don't either, but what, how, what, where do they, you got to think about it the other way. It's not like Cooley was a free agent looking to sign with somebody unless randomly he stays there this year with the Atlanta and then gets to go in the free agency. But you think about it. What are they getting? They're either going to have to give up Trey Lance, George Kittle, or Debo Samuel, or Brandon Ayuk, or a, a combination of the few. Like, they're not going to be able to keep all these pieces and still get Julio Jones. They aren't that bad of a team where they're going to be, oh, we'll give you the next two rounds first, unprotected. You guys can just have them. It's not like they're going to be in the top five picking. They're going to be like a Los Angeles Rams type team. Cost to the, the playoffs, 16 to 22. It Like, I don't know what they give up to get Julio, though. Like, Steep price, dude. It's steep price. It's a steep price, but the thing is, is the reason why I think they could get over the over the board here with offering, let's say, like a second, a fourth, and then like a future sixth or seventh along like the next three years. Here's the other piece that they would have to add. Yes, your run game would take a major hit after this, but the Falcons don't have a running back. They'll take anybody. Now, by any means, Roheem Mostert, that's what the guy I'm pointing to. By any means, I'm not saying he's a bad running back. He's a great running back. Before he got injured last year, man ran for like two 99-yard touchdowns back-to-back that were called back in a holding call in the first two plays of the game. I'm, by any means, I'm not saying that guy's a bad running back. But if I'm if I'm the Niners here, with it already an insanely stacked defensive core, like they, it's, it's a top-five defense in the league when, when healthy, when healthy, you have a young guy learning under Jimmy G who has been to the Super Bowl countless of times on the Patriots, obviously as a backup quarterback. And for the first year when he was healthy, he went to the, he took the Niners to the Super Bowl. He did. That when is when he was injured the whole year, he took him to the Super Bowl. You have Trey Lance. Let's say they do the whole Patrick Mahomes thing, sit him behind the start old veteran starting quarterback. Trey Lance sits under him. And then the year after he gets George Kittle, Debo Samuel and Julio Jones. By any means, I think this is a top two offense in the league. I, I 100% agree with you. Like, if they manage to keep this core and 
get Julio Jones, that would be a huge steal. But I think Julio Jones's draft, like or like trade stock, is just just based off his name. It is too inflate. Like he's a great, he's one a top ten receiver all time, no doubt about it. Probably top five, maybe even top three. Who but, Julio Jones? Yeah. Right now. Right now, he's a top ten receiver all time. Top ten receiver. Okay, I'll agree with that. He's at like eight, but like top three. Ah, uh, that's well, no. He- Eventually get there is what I'm trying to maybe do. you you got to put in the factor you have Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it finds bias there. Uh we'll they we'll that together that they'll be great for years to come. I agree. For sure. We'll we'll talk about that whole wide receiver top 10 in a different video. I'm pretty sure we'll get to that <laughs> one day. Um, we'll go on to the next team, the Baltimore Ravens here. I think if <laughs> like I said, Lamar gets like I said in the first point, Lamar gets a true wide receiver number one. I'm going to I'm gonna put this down. Marquise Brown, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He's a solid receiver. Brown, he, Brown, he, Brown. He's a solid receiver. But if you add Julio to this factor. It's over. Ravens win the Super Bowl for the next four years. I wouldn't say that. But I will look, put that down on the line. The Ravens will win the Super Bowl for the next four years. They'll, they'll be Super Bowl contenders, probably winning the AFC two out of those four years. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. say going to win the Super Bowl back to back to back to. They aren't. They aren't the Bills, but actually winning the games. Like I just don't think anyone can continue that success for four straight years. Success for four straight years. But Lamar, you're right. Lamar has never played with an actual wide receiver. He played with two tight ends one year. Um, but that what wasn't that his MVP year? It was his MVP year two years ago when they uh, did beat the Titans. Didn't they beat the Titans? Or the Titans beat them. They they played the Titans then. No, the Titans beat them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, but that that whole regular season they played awesome. They played great. I think they were like 13, 3, 14 and two, 12 and four, something something on. They were like the number one seed, but they Raven choked it. So I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of solid wide receivers on this lineup. You got Sammy Watkins, who was just signed. Rashad Bateman coming out of college. Picked up in the first round. Like I said, Marquise Brown, you have Mark Andrews, and in my opinion, a future top 10 running back in the league, J.K. Dobbins. He just needs to improve, and he's and he proved that his first year and his rookie year. And then you have Lamar Jackson, and like I said, adding Julio to this offense puts them in, puts the team into the Super Bowl. And they just, There's no doubt in my mind. Tackle uh, Ronnie Stanley to like a fat deal. So, I mean, Lamar's got protection. It's not like he's got the – like Michigan Wolverines offensive line while banged up in front of him. He's got – Quality tackles, quality yeah. guards, good center. I mean, it's, it's a good all around. Team. As long as they can put it together, they'll, they'll have success. All right, yeah, for sure. Um, on to the next team, the Los Angeles Chargers, which in my opinion, if Julio goes to this team, I think this will be the best team out of everybody. I think this is the best fit for Julio. I think this is my number one pick for where Julio might go. He probably wants to go somewhere warm. Somewhere warm, and he's gonna have contention to win a Super Bowl, and he's gonna have a good quarterback. And, and I know it. Chargers will give up the future to get this guy because you just look at the attendance for Chargers since they got Justin Herbert, their attendance has been much higher than it was. And Especially you, playing in a new stadium now, too. And you add Julio on top of that, you're gonna have a huge fan base, like huge. So and speaking about quarterback and fan base. I'm currently a fan of this guy, Justin Herbert. My opinion, he wins MVP for sure that Julio gets on the team and he's going to be an MVP contender for the rest of Julio. And you know what? No, no, not in that. For the rest of his prime, I think Herbert will still just be a normal MVP contender. I am so big on this guy. I was big on him last year when he was drafted. I think he should have went higher than Burrow. That's my opinion, but I'm glad he got land. He landed the chargers. They needed him. And I, I, I think with Julio on here, like I said in the point below, I think him and Keenan Allen combined for 2,300 receiving yards and over 25 receiving touchdowns. It's a full prediction, but I could easily see that. Easily, easily. That will go down. If you put Keenan Allen and Julio Jones on a team with Austin Eckler, great on an amazing offensive line, could use a tight end. They could. They did lose Hunter Henry, who was kind of a big piece in their offense last year. Yeah, 
But if you put Keenan Allen and Julio Jones down in the same team with a young Justin Herbert, who's an MVP contention for the rest of his prime, they will go down as a top 10 wide receiver duo of all time. And now to protect Herbert too, they have the O tackle out of uh, Northwestern. Rashawn Slater. Slater. Rashawn Slater. There you go. Rashawn Slater. And then they they got Corey Lindsley too over the um, off season from the Packers. Yeah. Top two center in the league right there. So they're stacking up the O line. My guess is they do attack very hard for Jones. Oh, and for sure. What you I, what they would I, give up? Well, what based, do you think? Just based on location. What, what what do you think they give up? I don't think I like you're you're being pretty skimpy with what these teams give up, like a second, third. But the ninth. Falcons have come out and said that they would accept a second round pick for Julio. They're not demanding a first. I know, but you need someone on top of that. I mean. I wouldn't be surprised to see a 2022 20, first, a fourth, and a sixth for Julio. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. That's for sure a quality trade. And like I was telling you before the video, the team right after this, and <laughs> <laughs> um, the team right after this and after that, the Titans and the Lions, um, I can for sure see them having to give up more for Julio due to the fact of, um, so let's say the Lions are going after Julio compared to the Chargers. We'll just take this for example. The Chargers are way closer to a Super Bowl. They're going to be contending for a bigger spot up in the draft. They're going for the 32 place in the draft, and that's all that's going to matter because they obviously the Falcons will want picks. They're going to be rebuilding. Matt Ryan's going to be gone in a year or two compared to somebody like the Lions. The Lions are going to be I, – I know I hate to say this, but they're going to be in the top 15 pick for the next two two years, I think before they can get another big time no, wide receiver. Bite, no, we're going to bite kneecaps. Our offensive tackle Panice Wheel is going to win the MVP with 16 touchdown receptions and he is going to run in 14 and he's oh, then going to then he's going to transition over that he's going to be a two-way player and be the cuz I don't even know who the kicker is anymore. So he's going to kick field goals for us as well. He's going to transition over to a nose guard. He's going to blow up any center in the league and he will record seven sacks. 16 running touchdowns, 19 catching touchdowns, and 64 field goals. You heard it from here first. Gavin from Locker Room. <laughs> oh, God. Bold prediction. I can't, I can't say it's not bold. <laughs> very bold. Very, very bold. <laughs> we, we're going to move on to the next team with the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill gets another great wide receiver. He lost what was it? Um, Corey Davis from Central Michigan. Yeah, yeah, he the was the the Jets. Yep, he's out. He's now in the New York Jets. Um, they still have AJ Brown, great wide receiver. I think he's more fit to be a wide receiver too on the team. Josh Reynolds is all right, and if I'm being 100 with you, I have never heard of Des Fitzpatrick. Neither have I. I I've heard of Patrick Fitzpatrick. I feel like that's somebody in the world. Yeah. But I, I know Des Bryant. Could a hey, could this be their um, son? Maybe it, that would be I'm not gonna get into that. The, this month is June, so we can't really talk. <laughs> but I mean it could. You know what? We're it, we're gonna go it, off that. You know what? We're it, we're gonna we're gonna go off that is the combined player of Des Bryant and Ryan's Fitzpatrick. If so, greatest wide receiver in the league. He's Taysom Hill on steroids. Um, <laughs> um, this is actually four points because I'd add two more. The load gets taken off Derrick Henry. Don't get me wrong. Derrick Henry is top three running back in the league right now. And hey, look, I'm curious. When are the Titans going to win? Now. Right oh, now. <laughs> they thank you for, I, thought, I thought they were just going to blandly win now. They're definitely going to win now. Yeah, but no, the, it, it's it's a win now if you get Julio. Use because, oh, for sure. It's a win now. <laughs> Should he use um taught you well, youngling? Jenkins taught you well. <laughs> <laughs> the load gets taken off, Henry. Like I said, we're moving up to 17 games this year. And if they don't get Julio, I can honestly see Derrick Henry going for 2,500 yards. There's no doubt in my mind that he it's not impossible to him. Oh, oh well, he'd be though. Well, he get overworked in 17 games. Plus, let's say they make it to the playoffs. Let's say they go pretty deep in it. I heard Patrick Mahomes wants to go 20-0. He's not going 20-0. But let's say they do play, end up going to the Super Bowl and playing 20 games. 
is Derrick Henry going to be overworked? That that's my worry with the seventeen game schedule. Are these guys going to be overworked? Because they aren't. They aren't. Their bodies were used to. Let's first say high school. High school is like ten games, twelve games. Go to if college. You make it, if you make it to the playoffs, it's like fourteen. But I I still understand. Yeah. It's it's under fifteen. College under fifteen, and then you just randomly. Let's say the Tennessee hasn't gone super deep into the playoffs the past couple of weeks. The most games he's ever played in the season is about like 17, 18. Then you put on 20. Like he's already guessed the end of the season doing push ups on like a rubber band. Like I, this guy's might get overworked. Like he's been carrying this team for two years now. I, I do not want to see a third and like him get injured in some sort of way from him, his load being too much. You know? Blow out like an ACL, MCL, yeah. something like that. You just don't want to see that as a football like fan. Like a type moment. Like he yeah. carried that team to what they could for two years. I mean, and then the turf bug. But Yeah. I, you, you just don't want to see that. I don't care if you're a fan that hates the Titans. If you grew up hating the Titans, you just don't want to see that. I mean – you There's, just went mute or I just lost connection. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Apparently my internet connection is unstable. Great, great midway through the video near the end. That's fantabulous. That it's, it's just, like I was saying, it's just something that you don't want to see. Um, but yeah, the load will get taken off Derrick Henry back onto the Julio Jones topic. Um, the load will get taken off significantly. Ryan Tannehill will throw for over 4,500 yards, over 35, 40 touchdowns. There's no doubt in my mind. I think this Tennessee Titan team, like I said, it will be a championship contender right now. They need to win now. Um, any, any last thoughts on the Titans? If they don't get Julio Jones, they might be in danger. I, can, I think Hunter... If if he was here and he was not working, he'd 100% agree with you. I really wish he was here so he could talk about his Titans, and I would love to hear his rant. Yeah, about how, how they don't make good decisions. And he'll, he'll, like, name, like, the bench coach of the kicker on that team. That I had Texans fan or well, Titans fan. Yeah, but. for sure. Well, a team that does not make good decisions and historically has not made good decisions our hometown detroit lions let's never been to a super bowl and the only team that's been around for 60 plus years all right um i should have erased all of this um so well just wins um they don't need julio jones you like you said earlier sewell is um the great is going to go down at the greatest all-time player of all time he's a two-way exactly. player 18 18- Hundred sacks in a year, twenty-five touchdowns combined, defense and offensively. Plus, he plays tackle. He takes down the whole defense. He's going to send twenty people to the hospital a game, including the head coach's wife. Great player. No, but he won't do anything besides take her kneecaps. So, I yes, mean, don't take that wrong. It was just for yeah, the kneecaps. Just the kneecaps. Just the kneecap. I got I got to find something online. So like when we start talking about the Lions more as what well, I think we're only like a hundred day. I think like a couple two days ago on Sunday was like a hundred days till kickoff for like the Cowboys and Bucks. Once we start talking about the Lions more, I just want to find a logo that says like it says Detroit Lions up here, but I just want like the kneecaps, like a kneecap, and it, and it's just the colors <laughs> of the Lions. <laughs> it was just. Kneecap, like it's a picture of like my kneecap, but it's like instead of the Honolulu blue, it's like a picture of my kneecap in the background of that Lions logo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's get on to the points here. We're getting way too off track talking about kneecaps. Um, the the Lions get a big wide receiver one. Julio Jones is ten times better upgrade from Bashad Perryman, Tyrell Williams, and Quintus Cephas. And there's no doubt in my mind that the offense easily goes from. I, I think they're around fifteen to twenty five right now. I, as, a, as a preseason ranking before the season, that is you can Stafford, though. That is, oh, that's preseason, right? I thought no, you this is about... just in my opinion. This is just in my oh. opinion. I oh. think they're a 15 to 25 ranked offense due to the fact you still have Hawkinson, Goff. Everybody hates him on him so much. I think he's a solid quarterback. Not saying he's no Matt I, Stafford. Well, the haters wrong with you. I think he has a comeback year. Comeback player of the year candidate, Jared Goff. Yeah, for sure. And, and like I've said from to many people too. This team is built with the way the way that Campbell and Holmes has built it is on grit, grind, and you've got a chip on your shoulder. You look at Pete players like Rashad Perryman, Tyrell Williams, for example, Jared Goff. They all got these chips on their shoulder. 
Huh? Penny Sewell. Penny Sewell. He's got a what? chip on his shoulder. He is not. He didn't play last year, and he didn't get picked up by the Bengals. Like I said, everybody on this team has a chip on their shoulder, and they are hungry. And um, I don't want to over talk the Lions just because I'm a big fan, and every single day, every single minute of the day, they're on my mind, and I always be watching videos, and we can go on and on about them. But ways with the training camp, like I've seen some videos on them. If you go back last year or even the year before and you look at the attitude change from two years ago compared to now, just by getting rid of a head coach and a GM, it's absolutely yeah, insane. Of uh, fat Patricia, dude, they just, they, they've excelled. Yeah. And like in, an, in another, another point to be made out, if you look at it, um, Bob Quinn, I think that was his, our old GM's name. I've completely forgot yeah. about him because I hate him so much. He never, I mean, never came out to OTAs, practices, and he always sat up in his air-conditioned booth. Brad and he was also, Holmes. No you offense to all the, he was also a ginger. No offense to all the locker room media gingers out there. <laughs> he, he didn't practice good, and he was a ginger. So, But speaking about Brad Holmes, I don't think I've not seen him out every single day. He has been out there oh, he's every out, single day he, for he's OTAs. Involved. He's a coach. He is a GM that is trying to coach a football team. You got a point. I mean, like he is out there. Even Martha, no, not Martha. Sheila Ford is out there. The owner is out there participating in practice. I've never well, seen I mean, this as a lot. I mean, when your owner can friendly walk without a cane, I mean, I, I, I hope so. They I come mean, up. Patricia, Patricia had to ride a four wheel around practice, but that, that's beside the <laughs> point. Go, go on, go on with your. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going and seeing him ride around in the four wheeler, and I'm just thinking, like, what's happening? <laughs> He's too lazy to walk. He, he only gets paid nine million a year. We, oh, we, he can walk for sure. But like I said, the team's involved. And speaking about that, the offense will easily go to a top five. They're, they're, they go from 15 to 25 to 20 to top five. The only the only spot that they are missing on the offensive side of the ball is a wide is a big time wide receiver. I think Perryman and Tyrell Williams and Cephas can go from four to two. And then you have to put in Amon St. Brown if he absolutely is a stud this year. You have a bunch of solid wide receivers, like I said, chip on the shoulder. And if you add Julio, it's a big time thing. It, and speaking about this for the next three years, they have five first round picks. I think it's four s- seconds. They they had a boat. And then I think in third round picks, if I'm not mistaken, they have like seven. Cause we got a bunch of common century picks from Marvin Jones leaving. And then um, Kenny Galladay leaving. I know we got that Jared think, Davis. I'm pretty sure we got one for him. It was like a fifth round pick though. And uh, the, we got a compensatory pick that was traded to us from uh, Los Angeles. I don't know if that was in the past, like 2021 draft. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, that was our th- that was a third round pick that we got for last year. Um, I think we got something else for we got a boatload of picks. The Lions yeah. have a boatload of picks and they can give some stuff up. And at that point, you take the load off the offense. You don't need to put anything in there anymore. It's a top five offensive line. And I know everybody's been, oh, top five, top five. They were horrible last year. They were ranked 13th. I don't want to hear anything. They were ranked 13th. And they have the best tackle in the draft class. So, what do you mean best tackle? They acquired. He plays the- every position. We've went over this. It's not I- just tackle. It's a football player. That that that's 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 what we're gonna call him. The football player. He doesn't just play tackle. Doesn't play football. defensive tackle. He's a football player because he plays every single position on the team. Jared Goff is injured. Puts a little in there. <laughs> no, it, it, do you remember Don Tripo? I think I, I recognize the name. I don't, I don't remember. He, he was a he was a larger defensive tackle uh, that played for Kansas City a couple of years ago. In a playoff game, he took a snap and just threw a touchdown pass to Travis Kelce. I thought that was funny. Like, imagine Sewell doing that. Like, that would be the most hilarious thing ever. I think it can happen. And like I said, the Lions, I think every single one of these teams, if they add Julio, they were put as an instant contender. The Lions probably take a year, one more year. They just got to work on the defense a little bit better. If they can get a big time, their, their defensive line is absolutely insane. If they can get a big time corner or safety by any means, 
that they're instantly contenders. There's no doubt in my mind. But other than that, um, time's running a bit short. I, and I, I think we're going to end it off on that one. I think I agree with that too. I think these are the top six contender, five contenders and like a wish list item. Like you do on your birthday list. Like, Hey, I want these five. Hey, Hey, speaking about my, speaking about birthday, gen- my birthday is in 17 days when this is getting posted. I mean, this is my birthday gift. Tulio come to Detroit. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, any other thoughts on any of these six teams? Any um any other teams you think that could have another major push in here? Um, no, like I could definitely see like a uh, Minnesota maybe trying to make a push, but I don't think they have the pieces to acquire them. I could definitely see an Arizona maybe. Oh yeah, I've I've heard about that. Seattle, they got that big Russell Wilson situation up there. Like, I mean, you could trade him. Um, maybe the Steelers, maybe they're trying to give big Ben pieces or something, but other than that, I, I don't really see any other contenders like for Julio. Julio is a certain player, specific player that wants to play in only select cities. So if you trade him to the wrong city, he'll just pull a Gronk on you and say, I'm retired. Or he so, just plays the year there and leaves in free agency the year after that. Exactly. But yeah, I, I, I think with you wrapping your points up with me, wrapping my points up, I think that's done. Um, we're like I said, since you're off of baseball now, are you playing travel or no? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there goes my idea. I was going to say we could do some MLB reviews every week. Or like, every no, we week. can't. It's not like I go to school in the summer. I'm not brain dead. True. So we could probably do that every like two. We're we're gonna we're gonna push out some MLB reviews. Somebody throws a no hitter, we're gonna get on there and talk about it. If somebody goes five for five in a game, two home runs, two singles, something like that. You know, something like historical or just something that's we point out. Something. Big, something. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're gonna try to get those videos out to you. The NBA playoffs is coming to an end. Um, I would like to do a watch party on one of the finals, like if the finals games, that'd be cool. Like game one of the finals, like let's say we like see. A Suns versus Nets final, obviously. It'd be cool to watch game one as a watch yeah. party. Other than that, I I, th- I think that's it for the video and the future plans. Um, before I go, make sure to hit the subscribe button, the post notification bell. Only takes three seconds. It's free, doesn't cost anything. Another thing to point out, go follow the social medias. We pour, we post more breaking and instant news on the Instagram, Twitters, and eh. TikTok. We haven't been much active, I'll be honest with you. Not gonna lie to you about that. We haven't been on active on TikTok in forever. Um, ever since B Green got the big TikTok that blew up, we stopped doing it. Yeah, because he just can't come up with any other ideas. Because we told him he ran the TikTok, and then he was like, "Oh, okay." And then he wanted to do a, a video where he was like slapping a football name and football. I was like, "Dude, that is so stupid." But it would probably got like ten thousand views again. So whatever. But I'll talk to him about it. We'll talk to him about it. But other than that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We'll come out with a new episode soon and hopefully another podcast this upcoming month. Since it is June, I would like to put out a podcast every month. Maybe we can get an, uh, another NBA one or a baseball one just to think about it. Oh, that's nice. Going back to the Titans. All right. Thank you guys again. Um, adios, amigos.